welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about uh, first aid kits and um, I'd also like to convey to you a kind of different philosophy as it uh, pertains to uh, first aid kits and I hope I can get you thinking in a different direction than a first aid kit. And so here that's kind of your normal first aid kit there. Um, we're all used to these type of things and um, um, you know standard stuff in them ointments creams uh, gauze band-aids um, various other things and um, in the military we used to call those boo-boo kits and um, that's basically what it boils down to you know if you have a kid it'll it'll uh, help them to feel better but um, I've taken uh, this and, and turned it into a trauma pack and so I'll just show you what that looks like real quick. And so I've got a quick clot uh, gauze. Um, this is a uh, gauze uh, impregnated with a um, uh, chemical that'll stop uh, the bleeding. And uh, you just put these right in the womb. Um, they were uh, developed for the military. They work great, and um, you, we can you can buy them on the civilian market now. Um, the second thing is a um, cat tourniquet, and uh, tac, uh, cat tourniquet uh, is a tourniquet that you can apply and uh, secure and walk away from, and so uh, that allows you to continue treating somebody or work on getting them out of there, or whatever. And um, um, these things are really what's going to save somebody's life, and it's really what's missing in most kits. So, um, very simple, simple thing that'll uh, give somebody a fighting chance to get to civilization and um, get some medical care. And yet, uh, most people don't carry one. So, abs absolutely essential to have a cat tourniquet in your uh, in your kit. And um, they're not cheap. You know, this is about $24. I've got several of them. I, I keep multiple kits, and I have one in each kit. And um, it's worth it. It's, it's worth having those. <clears throat> Last thing I've got in uh, my little kit is uh, a little Israeli bandage. Uh, these are um, large uh, compression-type bandage bandages. And um, it'll allow you to treat a large area like a chest or an abdomen wound uh, or even, you know, somebody's uh, thigh if they, they're a really large person. Um, so they're really nice to have. And so um, I don't really have a first aid kit. I've got a trauma kit because if, if you're out of, away from civilization, hunting, fishing, uh, kayaking, hiking, camping, whatever it may be, um, that's the type of care that you're really going to need, right? Um, you're not you're not going to die from a scratch, and you're not going to die from a, a poison oak or something like that. Um, so what you should be carrying is a, a trauma pack of some type. This is a little expanded one. Um, that I put together and um, I got a rag in there because um, you just you're always out there something happens and you don't have anything to clean the wound off with or you know uh, maybe somebody rolled down a hill and you need to clean up their face a little um, and I do carry a ace bandage for for minor boo-boos like sprains and things like that um, uh, this stuff is um, is uh, that, that medical tape. You go in, the doctor puts gauze on in, they put this really sticky tape that is very elastic. And um, this is really good because you don't think about it, but if, if you have trouble out in the woods, usually you're dirty. You have a lot of dirt on you, uh, blood, and this thing just sticks to anything. And so this, these are great to have. You can buy them like off of Amazon, other places. And um, I keep extra in my pack. I keep extra in the house. And I have some in all my kits. 
Uh, I also have regular, uh, you know, waterproof tape that you used to put uh, gauze on with, just in case. Um, again, you know, the cat tourniquet. Um, I'm able to put a little boo-boo bag in here, you know. A lot of times I'm hiking with the grandkids, and so that helps. But the other thing I uh, uh, that will help you in a trauma kit is like Benadryl, because um, if somebody's going into uh, anaphylactic shock, uh, Benadryl will help them and, and uh, keep them from going under. And um, uh, Pepto-Bismol, because... Um, Pepto-Bismol will keep them from vomiting, and uh, you don't really need that when somebody's having a trauma. That's just going to dehydrate them and make things worse, and you really don't know how long it's going to take to get you, uh, get them to some professional help. So um, little things you can put in your kit to really help you uh, um, make a situation better. Um, alcohol prep pads. So... I think the best is uh, is um, isopropyl iodine, and that's the stuff they use in surgery. They they just spray it all over you, and it disinfects and kills all the germs. But um, if you put that in a bottle in your kit, it's liable to leak. So this is the next best thing. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. I do keep a little neosporin. You know, if, if you end up being stranded for a couple days, that'll definitely help you. Um, you should ideally have a pair of scissors, but I keep a, a large folder on, on me all the time. And so I just keep a little bit Victorinox. If you've ever used these, the blades are like uh, razors. They're very sharp. And um, if you do need to uh, do some uh, cutting for whatever reason, you know, that's sufficient. Or nowadays they have those knives that, that you can change the blades out. Those things are razor sharp and they would be good in a kit. Um, here's the uh, quick clot. And again, it's, um, you know, a civilian quick clot. Stuff just works great. And then another uh, Israeli bandage that I keep in there. Um... The military kits nowadays, um, they, they used to just be uh, first aid kits, but now they're uh, pretty much trauma kits, and they even include a uh, breathing tube. I don't think that's a bad idea, but I don't have the training to use a breathing tube, and um, I don't know, maybe I'll convince myself uh, to put one in there, but I, I think it's a good idea to have in a kit, but... Um, you can really mess somebody up if you don't know how to apply a breathing tube. So I don't know if you're going to do that, you ought to get some training on it. So, um, so one, you know, uh, I think a kit like this is too small and one a little bigger. You, I didn't have this full stuff full. You, you can add things to it that you can think of like scissors if you want, but, um, I definitely, you know, this is not too big. It's usually I put it right onto my pack right there, and um, it carries. It gives me some flexibility in what I'm doing. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, gave you something to think about. Um, I really think somebody should have a trauma kit anywhere they go. I carry it to the range with me when I go. And um, if you liked it, go ahead and uh, like the video. If you'd like to see more content like this, <clears throat> I'd really love to have you to, uh, to the channel. Go ahead and subscribe. And remember, you'll know the truth. The truth will set you free. And um, thanks again. I really appreciate you all watching the video.